Lesson 15 is on sigma and pi bonds and orbital hybridization, which is an SAT2 concept. So we're going to refer to carbon and its hybridized orbitals and why it's so unique. Uh, sigma and pi bonds, we'll explain them, and then hybridized orbital diagrams. So when we're looking at carbon, carbon doesn't necessarily follow the Lewis dot diagram rules that we spoke about. It contains one lone pair and two bonding pairs if you follow the idea that we had described earlier. However, this is not correct because carbon contains what we call hybridized orbitals. Due to the hybridizing of the electron orbitals, carbon can make a total of four possible bonds. This is because the S and P blocks share valence electrons. So again, just to give you an overall concept of what orbital hybridization is, it's where S and P atomic orbitals are blended together in various ways. And this helps us result in various Vesper structures. So it coincides with the whole Vesper idea again. This doesn't necessarily just happen with carbon, um, but we're going to use carbon to help us to understand hybridization today. So as you can see here, this is the normal orbital notation for carbon. There's 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Um, and here it really only shows two spaces for bonding, which are in the 2p sublevel. But if we do it um, where there's a hybrid orbital, where we mesh the s and the p sublevels in the second energy level together, you see that there's an opening of four spaces for bonding. This is what we call hybridized. So the first type of bond that we're going to be looking at is called sigma. And sigma bonds will be when carbon binds up to any other atom. So if you look in the molecule below, every line that is highlighted in that blue aura is what we call sigma bonds. This means that they are always made in a hybridized orbital and they will always be categorized as single bonds or the first bond of a double bond, which we see on the lower right-hand side, or it's the first bond of a triple bond, which we see in the lower left-hand side. Pi bonds, however, are going to be the second or third connecting bond with another atom that carbon makes. These will be made from leftover p orbitals, which is incredibly specific. Pi starts with p, so do p orbitals. You have to remember that. That means that they're going to be the second bond of a double bond, remember the first bond of a double bond sigma, and they will make up the second and third bond of a triple bond. Again, its first bond in a triple is sigma. So we're noticing them here, and there's only three of them, while all the purple lines represent sigma. So let's analyze this first structure. So this is an organic molecule of two carbons, two halogens, and four hydrogens. So using our hybridized orbital, which we're calling an sp3, sp3 allows, as we see, for the ability for four sigma bonds to occur, which we're noticing will form here, 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 and here, and they're all sigma. Remember, sigma bonds only form in a hybridized orbital. So single bonds with carbon are going to be sp orbital hybridized. Therefore, these are all going to be our single bond locations. So you can imagine that one of them is connected to another carbon, the other blank spots to that hydrogen, and the other two are connected to the individual halogens. So when you guys notice that your carbon has four single bonds, it will have an sp3 hybridized orbital. So in this organic molecule, we have two carbons and four hydrogens. You're noticing that we are going to be containing three sigma bonds. Yes, one of the double bonds is going to be sigma, but the other one is going to be considered pi. Now, with the sigma bonds, you're noticing we have what we call an sp2 orbital. In the sp2 orbital, it allows for your three single sigma bonds to occur. But because of the fact that we have that one pi bond in our double bond, this is where we have an unhybridized 2p orbital, which we notice up here. That 2p orbital 
will be the one that makes the double bond. So if you notice a double bond, but two other single bonds, you're going to have an sp2, 2p hybridized orbital. So here you have an example with a triple bond. Um, in this case, the hybridization is sp because there's only two sigma bonds. And you'll notice that it's the first of the triple bond. Those two single bonds occur, that first initial bond between the C and the N and the C and the H, are able to happen because of this hybrid SP. The double and the triple bond between the C and the N are what we call our leftover bonds, our leftover pi bonds. So those are going to be the 2P sublevel, the two extra orbitals that we haven't used yet in the carbon atom. Carbon dioxide also follows a similar pattern to hydrogen cyanide because of the fact that it has two sigma bonds. So it has the sp uh, or hybridization. It has two single bonds. The second bond in both double bonds are the pi bonds, which are the 2p leftovers.